Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the August 10th, 2020 meeting of the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission, please. If everyone would stand, Commissioner Craig Lynch, please, in our prayer and our pledge. Would you bow with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the blessings you give us today and the blessings you give us each and every day, and we hopefully we use those to to your, uh, your honor and your glory, Heavenly Father, because they are your blessings, and you can, you can take them away just as easy as you give them to us, and we thank you for them. We thank you for the opportunity we have to be here at the Planning Commission to do the uh, work of our fellow man. We hope that we do it in a, in a, in a good manner, Heavenly Father, that we, we, we weigh, all the, weigh all the situations and, and be, be fair to everyone concerned. We, again, thank you for our protectors that we have. We, there's people that are... Uh, the way the world's going now, the our protectors are, 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 are so important. We, we thank you for them, and we just pray again for uh, some kind of relief from this COVID. And we, we, we just put that in your hands. We don't, we don't know what to pray for. We don't know what to ask for, but we'll put it in your hands and pray that you'll just be with us, Heavenly Father, and be with us tonight in this meeting. In Christ's name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you. May be seated. Call the roll, please, Gail. Charlotte P. Here. Chip Pinion. Here. Craig Lynch. Here. David Jones. Here. Jim Averwater. Lee Vogel, Here. Marvin Whitworth, Here. Mike Cush, Pettis Reed, Here. Rhonda Allen, Here. Jeff Phillips. Present. May I have a quorum. This meeting of the Rutherford County Regional Planning Commission is conducted electronically pursuant to Governor Bill Lee's Executive Order 16. I would ask for a motion that conducting this meeting electronically is necessary to protect to protect public health, safety, and welfare in light of the coronavirus. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Charlotte P. Yes. Chip Pinion. Yes. Craig Lynch. David Jones. Yes. Jim Averwater. Yes. Lee Bogle. Yes. Marvin Whitworth. Yes. Pettis Reed. Yes. Rhonda Allen. Yes. Jeff Phillips. Yes. Aries. Thank you, Gail. We have no minutes to approve and we have no items withdrawn or deferred. Thank goodness. Uh, and so with that, we'll get right into our business. Um, under new business item 6A, uh, we have one item submitted for a final plat approval, 6AA 19-2001 property for Todd Thomas. This is a reapproval. Six lots on 15.13 acres zoned RL Alisona Road. Donald Fletcher and Todd Thomas are the applicants. Doug? Yes, sir, and good evening, commissioners, those here and those watching uh, virtually. Uh, can everybody hear me okay with the mask on? Okay, good. At uh, Public Works the other night, there was a little bit of an issue with that. Uh, this plat before you uh, was actually approved by the commission back in March of last year. Of course, final plat approvals are only good for uh, 12 months, and this is obviously outside of that. The plat in and of itself is in fairly good shape. Uh, there are a couple tweaks that do need to be made as far as staff is concerned. One of them has to do with the pad elevations. There's a couple of typos on there that the surveyor is aware of, and he was going to fix the uh, minimum pad elevations. Uh, also, there's a looks like he's drawn on a easement, uh, electrical easement on an adjacent property. We just need clarification if that's an existing easement or if that's actually uh, proposed. Because if it's proposed, that's on somebody else's property. So we just need clarification on that. The other thing, after speaking with CUD about this, uh, they will their will serve letter is expired. They will need to resubmit uh, for that. Uh, the applicant has been made aware of that. Uh, we're comfortable with this moving forward because we won't sign it until those items are taken care of anyway so uh, but with that uh, we'd recommend approval of this thank you Doug Tech, I have a question it says that three of the lots will use the same access road. yes uh, three of the lots actually are sharing an access easement the larger lots in the back 
that you can see. Uh, there's uh, two, three lots that have road frontage, and then there's a private easement that accesses the lots in the back. So that's, that's what that means. Other questions? I'll make a motion to approve, subject to all staff comments. We have a motion and a second to approve item 19-2001, final plat for Todd Thomas. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please, Gail. Charlotte P. Yes. Chip Pinion. Yes. Craig Lynch. Yes. David Jones. Yes. Jim Averwater. Yes. Lee Bogle. Yes. Marvin Whitworth. Yes. Edis Reed. Yes. Rhonda Allen. Yes. Jeff Phillips. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 6B, these are items that are, uh, uh, we have one zoning request that is scheduled for a public hearing, uh, and that's item 6BA, REZ20-017, Ron Molichon for Robert Stroop. The location is Lytle Creek Road. Commission District is six. The county commissioner is Joe Frank Jernigan. Site of the site is approximately 78 acres. Tax map 134. Existing zoning is a PUD for planned unit development. This is for a residential subdivision. Proposed zoning is a PUD amendment. The revised layout and rezoning of a portion of the original PUD to RM. Doug? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, this request probably looks familiar to most of the commissioners. Uh, this actually came before the planning commission last month uh, and was recommended for approval. Following the meeting, we had some conversations with the applicant's representative uh, regarding portions of the property that are no longer going to be a part of the development. Uh, you'll recall that the application was to amend the PUD to reduce the number of lots due to wetland soils that were found on a portion of the site, mainly that site on the western side of Lytle Creek Road. It was determined that the best course of action for what they perhaps wanted to do with the property in the future, just leave it alone for now, maybe subdivide it off into larger tracks at some point in the future. The best way to do that would be to actually remove it from the PUD entirely and to zone it back to RM, which is what, uh, again, that's what the original zoning was. Now, that wasn't made explicit during the Planning Commission's meeting back in July. It was just an amendment with the PUD. So after discussing that with the applicant's representative, we thought the best course of action would be to run this back through the Planning Commission just to make sure that uh, we had crossed the T's and dotted our I's before moving this forward to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, I'd be more than happy to go into any more detail with this. Nothing else on this has changed from last month. Everything that you see in the pattern book, uh, as far as the lots, the house sizes, lot sizes, whatnot, everything else is the same. So uh, the biggest change is that we just wanted to clarify that a portion would be removed from the PUD and actually zoned back to RM. Uh, so I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, the applicant's representative, Mr. Rob Mulchin, is uh, on the call. So uh, I'm sure he'll be happy to answer any questions as well. We can hear from the applicant if you want, or I'll entertain a motion. At the public hearing first. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's fine. I want to hear from the applicant. Rob, just hold on, okay? <laughs> At this time, Sir? I'll declare a public hearing open for item REZ20-017, Mr. Robert Stroop. Anyone wishing to speak? Hearing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Thank you, second. Commissioner. We have a motion and a second to approve item REZ20-017 for Mr. Robert Stroop. Call the roll, please, Gail. Charlotte P. Yes. Chip Pinion. Yes. Craig Lynch. David Jones. Yes. Jim Averwater. Yes. Lee Bogle. Yes. Marvin Whitworth. Yes. Pettis Reed. Yes. Rhonda Allen. Yes. Jeff Phillips. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Rob, do you have anything you want to say? No, thank you. I just want to, Doug and I just want to make certain we clarified so everybody understands exactly what it was that we were trying to do the last time. So appreciate the vote. Thank you. 
Item 6BB, uh, these are zoning uh, ordinance amendments that we've talked about in the past. Um, and uh, we'll have to have public hearings on all of them. I'll just turn it over to Doug and let him run through them. Uh, we can take uh, the public hearing all at once. We don't have to do uh, I believe so, unless Nick has anything beyond that. But yeah, I mean, especially considering that these are fairly uh, what I call housekeeping more in nature. So I think one's enough Very good. for all of them. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the, this opportunity to present some amendments. Uh, we went over these at the last Planning Commission meeting just a few weeks back, so I won't go into a whole lot of detail. Uh, you'll recall we had a, a pretty good discussion on these amendments during our last meeting. Uh, the first, just uh, dealing with site plans regarding the time or the uh, language in pre-application conferences. Again, as you recall, we discussed the fact that we had pre-application conferences for subdivision plans but we didn't have anything for site plans. So we're just adding a little bit of language, as you can see on the text in bold there, prior to submittal of an application for a site plan, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the timeline for site plan approvals, we've also added a little bit of language in there uh, that the applicant or the representative can waive the time requirements of 90 day, uh, uh, 90 day either approval, denial, or whatnot on a site plan. Again, that just clarifies that. That's something we do in practice anyway, but uh, that's, it's good to have that uh, in the code. Uh, part of the biggest change is uh, taking the cluster box units that were approved by the Planning Commission uh, for about the last year or so and making that more of a staff approval. Uh, that's based on the comments we heard and the feedback from the Planning Commission on that. So uh, those regulations, I won't go into all that, but you can see that uh, we've reworded uh, item seven there to uh, make allowances for staff review of those particular kiosks. Uh, in section 604, table three, we discussed that in commercial neighborhood, you can have residential uses as a permitted use by right, but the, I'm sorry, that chart didn't get on there. <laughs> but uh, for what, oh yeah, I'm sorry, it's just, uh, it wasn't bolded. Uh, the, uh, for whatever reason, we didn't have any of the bulk requirements on there. So this change just adds the bulk requirements in that chart as, as you can see. Uh, moving on to fences, walls, and hedges. Again, we just clarified, again, what we already do in practice as far as alternate side yards on corner lots. They're treated as side yards. This would be the side that, of the corner that the house is not facing. This would be the, uh, what we call an alternate side yard. Uh, we would treat that as a side yard for the purposes of fences. And then adding a, a, a little uh, snippet, if you will, in, in Appendix A, the zoning ordinance does uh, have the title of planning director, which refers to the director or their authorized representative. Uh, the county engineer was not listed in that, so we're just adding that into Appendix A for clarification. Uh, but with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. The one item that uh, we discussed we did leave out, and that was uh, administrative approval of new construction on site plans of less than 3,000 square feet. Uh, the Planning Commission indicated they still wanted to see those, so we've left that We've left it the way it is in the ordinance and we took that p potential amendment out. So that's not included in this. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Doug or staff? Very good. Ready for a public hearing? This time I'll declare a public hearing open for all of our zoning ordinance amendments. Anyone wishing to speak? Hearing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed. I'll entertain an, a motion. Chair, I'll make a motion to move these, uh, to approve these revisions and move these forward to the County Commission for approval. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve all the recommended zoning ordinance amendments by staff. Other questions or comments? Call the roll, please, Gail. Charlotte P. Yes. Chip Pinion. Yes. Craig Lynch. Yes. David Jones. Yes. Jim Averwater. Yes. Lee Bogle. Yes. Marvin Whitworth. Yes. Pettis Reed. Yes. Rhonda Allen. Yes. Jeff Phillips. Yes. Motion carries. Just a reminder, the one uh, rezoning request and the zoning ordinance amendments will be heard before the full county commission on Thursday, September 17th in this room. 
Uh, any other business, Doug? Uh, just a, a few short items that should only take me about an hour to talk about. Um, <laughs> just one quick uh, update. Um, I sent an email out the other day about the power of 10 uh, regional summit this Thursday. I have heard from several, but if you would like to attend, it's virtual this year. So if you'd like to attend, let me know. I can just send in the list and they'll invoice us for the entire amount so you don't have to fool with uh, with any of that. So that was all I had. Thank you, Doug. Our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, 9 a.m., August the 24th, and it will also be in this room. Anyone else have anything? I would assume you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't sent me any instructions. Actually, I'll actually be there, but uh, I would assume that, uh, yes, they'll send you a link of some sort. As always, thank you for your time, your attendance, and your patience as we work through this coronavirus. With that, we're adjourned.